All right, the second type is a stabilized or pseudo steady state. <clears throat> and you can call this a long, long time test. It is typically designed to determine the size of the reservoir and boundaries. Um, that's kind of a stretch, but you, 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 you'll more often see the size of the reservoir in this, these long-term tests than the transient test. It's good for measuring PI, basically. <clears throat> you just tell Paul before you run the test to stick his tool in the hole and get a static fluid level, <clears throat> I mean, excuse me, a static pressure <clears throat> before you've started the testing. Um, it's, it's the most useful tool for determining future production rates because like the transient test, you get permeability and skin, but you're also going to prove up a certain size of the reservoir. So you can, you prove up at least this minimum size so you know how it's going to deplete and what rates you can expect due to that depletion. Um, Permeability in skin can be missed if it's not designed properly. Uh, permeability in skin comes very early in the test period and if you don't have enough data points there, uh, you can skip over it. Problems or it takes a long time. Uh, the more reserves you need to prove up, the longer the flow shut-in time. That's a common misconception in, in designing and we'll get to design here in just a bit, but um, you know, the, the more reserves you're interested in proving up, the more you have to flow and the longer the shut-in has to be. Wells often need to be shut in for a couple of weeks. Now this can be mitigated if you've got a surface readout gauge. And I know Paul's got several of those. I don't know if anybody else does or not. <clears throat> if you can, if you have the, the surface gauge, then you can uh, look at the pressures and see if it's built up. Otherwise, you just have to guess at it. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, due to the you know downhole equipment, a lot of times you have to have surface equipment, uh, especially if you've got a gas well that's a high rate that's going to take uh, a heater on the choke to keep it from flowing. You might have to have a separator, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to lose reserves during the test because uh, chances are you're probably not hooked up to a pipeline, so you're just going to be flaring the reserves. Um, Rerun is difficult and expensive because things have to stabilize before you can rerun it. And you know, giving off all that green, it's all that gas. It may not be very green. I just added that for the benefit of all you green people out there. <laughs> okay, the third one is rate transient analysis, and this is a is a very new technique uh, that's. It's just, it's just a wonderful for those of us in the uh, well testing business. It's based on flowing rates and pressures. So let's say that, you, and here again, I'm going to give you an example here in a little bit. You've got a uh, gas well that's flowing. You want to know what the reserves are. You've only got 30 days of production. Well, you're not going to have a decline curve for it. Volumetrics are questionable. Uh, and you don't really want to shut the thing in the two or three weeks it might require for a good buildup so you can do a P over Z. With this technique, you just monitor your flowing rates <clears throat> and a uh, just you know one pressure a day, uh, preferably a casing pressure. And with 30 days of production, I can I can tell you just about exactly what your uh, reserves in place are. The well can be flowing to sales the entire time; no shut-ins required. It's more accurate than P over Z, primarily because you don't actually have to shut the well in and guess how long it's going to take it to build up. It can be used to calculate perm and skin, however, um, if you're just taking one pressure a day and one rate per day, you're probably going to miss that. You probably need electronic data uh, recording to, in order to calculate perm and skin. It applies to oil wells too, it's just that oil wells are more difficult because um, they're either pumped off or if they're not pumped off, you have to have some way to shoot fluid levels periodically. But you can do that if you've, if you've got a, a pumping fluid level. And you can see that pumping fluid level change daily than it is applicable to oil wells as well. We'd have to change the production rate in order to change the... <coughs> it, um, you know, the production rate doesn't make any difference because it's a, it's a function of the pressure. And so if you're like... Gas well is the simplest case. If your flow rate goes up, that means that your flowing pressure has to go down. Vice versa, if your flowing pressure, I'm talking bottom hole pressure, goes up, then your flow rate's going to come down. This technique takes all that into account. That's the beauty of it. So 
you could have different flow rate, different flow pressure every day during the 30 days and it still takes it into account. So you don't need a constant flow rate. <coughs> All right, that's just kind of an overview of them. Obviously DSTs are the most common transient tests in Kansas. Uh, probably run more here than anywhere else in the country. It is probably the best tool for determining skin damage. Skin damage again is one of these things that a transient uh, test uh, is really useful for. It determines KH. Now we, I, I talked about this very briefly. Um, when I do an analysis I don't Act, the, the math works out so you're not actually calculating permeability. You're calculating the product of permeability times net pay thickness. So when I ask you, <clears throat> when I'm doing these things, how thick is the pay? This is why I need that. Because I, I take the uh, KH and divide it by the height of the pay to determine the permeability. Uh, it's also great for determining fluids produced. I mean that's, you know, it's, it's a whole lot more accurate than logs are typically. Excuse me, Richard, but um, tells you what you got. It does not determine original oil in place or original gas in place. There again, the, the duration of the test is just too short to determine that. In Kansas, I'm going to pick on you guys here, it does a poor job of determining initial reservoir pressure. That's because of the long initial flow periods that you run. You know, anything over three minutes is wasted effort and actually destroys data. Um, I wind up having to spend so much time trying to figure out what the initial reservoir pressure is um, that it's just, and, and, and even that number after I've worked on it is, is subject to question. Um, if, I, if, if, it's, if I have a long way to have to extrapolate it for a buildup, the certainty of the evaluation drops dramatically. Uh, I've got to have one point that I'm absolutely positive of and ideally that's going to be your initial reservoir pressure. You start running those 30 minute uh, flow periods and you've destroyed any chance of actually measuring that. Okay, which leads us to here. The initial flow and shut in period. The only reason that we run an initial flow and a final flow period, two periods, the initial is there to calculate or to measure your initial reservoir pressure. That's the only reason it is. Uh, you know, Paul showed an example where people are just running a long one. If you're going to run a 30 minute initial, you might as well just run one <coughs> flow and shut in period. Save yourself the trouble. Um, it, just, it just serves no purpose to run a 30 minute flow period, you know, 30 minute shut in, and then go to your longer period. Just run it all together. It, uh, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't give you the giggles of sitting on the rig floor and seeing the big blow and all that, but uh, your information is going to be just as useful with the one flow period as it is with the two. Um, we talked about this a little bit. It relieves the supercharge. Um, there again, that's, that's a whole topic of argument in and of itself, but that's why you flow it. Uh, now having said that, you go into the Gulf Coast and they run RFTs, repeat formation testers, and with those it just is a probe that stabs into the formation and there's no real flow involved in it. It's just measuring the pressure. Um, you know, that's, that's even a better way to do it. But if there is any supercharging, you can remove it in that short flow period. And then you need to leave it long enough <clears throat> to build up to PI. Um, Paul was talking about the surface readout that he tried several years ago. That's the best way to do it. You just, you know, do your very short initial flow period and then watch the build up till it levels out and it's not building anymore and bang, you've measured your reservoir pressure. Uh, other than that, you know, you might be better off with my suggestions, which is the three minute flow or 30 minute shut in about 10 to one. That should get you a stabilized initial pressure. <laughs> <laughs>